What makes more power on a small block Chevy? Tune port injection or carburation? Let's find out. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a comparison between carburation and fuel injection. And the reality is it's less about the delivery method of the fuel than it is about the intake manifold design. Now we're gonna take a look at the factory tune port injection, the old L98 stuff on the 350 and the Corvettes, compared to simple carburation. In this case, it's a dual plane intake and a simple carburetor. Now, a lot of people like to get wrapped up in what's the best thing, fuel injection or carburation. And if you're one of those guys, <laughs> take a look at some of the other videos where I did a direct comparison between introducing the fuel with a carburetor versus introducing the fuel with port injection. Now, in its most absolute term, running fuel or supplying fuel with a carburetor on say a single plane manifold as opposed to supplying it with port injection down by the head, um, the carburetor will usually make a little more power. And the reason for that is it's just time. It had, there's more time for charge cooling to take place. So if you're injecting the fuel at the port, there's less time before that fuel is actually burned to decrease the charge temperature uh, than there is if you introduce it like up at the manifold flange or, or the carburetor flange. So there's just more time for it to take place. So in any given instance, it's usually there's a little bit more power to be had from the carburetor as long as you have the air fuel right. Now, in terms of absolutes, having direct port fuel injection allows you to make sure that you have optimized air fuel ratio under every given condition, idle, part throttle, cruise, if you're trying to get maximized fuel mileage. And even if you have sequential injection, it allows you to have individual like air fuel. It allows you to tune that individually so that it's right, not just as a general sense, but it's right in every cylinder. In carburetion, you can't do that. So you get to pick your thing. But this test is actually less about carburetors versus computers or carburetion versus fuel injection than it is about the specific intake manifolds that we use. Like the tune port setup, long runner stuff. And in my opinion, I love it. I think it's probably the best factory fuel injected induction system that GM ever made. It looks, it's very cool looking. It looks like a Klingon warship, which I think is awesome. So I really like that setup. But it is a very long runner intake, intake manifold setup, induction system. So the long runners promote lots and lots of torque production at low RPM, but they limit power at higher RPM. And I did a test a while, a while back, I say a while back, it was probably 10 or 15 years ago. I compared about eight or 10 different tune port and systems, and I might do a video on that. But the reality is that all of these systems, if they don't change the runner length, they don't dramatically change what the shape of that curve is. You can make the runners bigger, you can port match them, you can make the plenum bigger, you can port the lower uh, manifold, you can make it flow better, you can do all of that stuff. But ultimately, it's the runner length that's gonna determine where these things want to make power. And this is what we showed in this test. So we compared the factory tune port setup to your typical small block Chevy dual plane carburetor induction system. I also have a second test where we ran the dual plane carburetor induction system on a slightly wilder motor. And we compare that to a Holley Stealth Ram, which is kind of a tune port setup. It's actually more of a tunnel ram with a box and the tune port dual throttle body inlet system on. So we've got two tests, which are really cool. Take a look at the results. Let's see what happens. To illustrate what happens when we upgrade a factory tune port injection, like an L98 350, with simple carburation, obviously the first thing we had to do was put that motor up on the dyno, and that's exactly what we did. At West Tech Performance, we used one of their L98 350s, and this thing came from the Chevy Ray Shop, so right off the bat, we thought, hey, this thing's got to have some kind of camshaft in it, especially after we ran this test, and we saw, hey, look, Look how much power this thing's making. I mean, it's rated at 245 horsepower. And when we put this thing up on the dyno with long tube headers and open throttle body, electric uh, water pump, you know, same kind of thing. And after we obviously optimized the tune with a fast management system, this thing made 332 horsepower, which is a lot more than the factory 245 rating. Now, whenever we run these things on the dyno, we always make more power than they're rated at just because of the way that we test them. When we run them with long tube headers and open exhaust, no accessories, an open throttle body, no air intake, no mass air meter, none of that stuff. Obviously an optimized tune and slightly colder. We normally get between 50 and 60 extra horsepower compared to what the factory rating is just by the way that we test it. Now that's the difference. It's not that there's happy dynos or anything like that. But this thing was up quite a bit more than that. So we were, we were kind of expecting somewhere in the... 290 to 300 horsepower range with a factory L98 because we've run a few of them. 
This one was making more than that. So we suspect this thing had some kind of little cam in it, but we never took it apart before this test, before we were going to compare the factory fuel injection to carburation. So at any rate, this thing made 332 horsepower, and this is always the case with an L98, a tune port deal. These things make more torque than they make horsepower, and that's a function of the really long runner length used on the factory tune port system. So this thing made almost almost 400 foot-pounds of torque. It made 394 foot-pounds, which is, you know, <laughs> that's why these things felt so good. I mean, they promised with all of that torque production from the long runner, they, they promised an awful lot. And then unfortunately, as you can see from the power curve, the horsepower kind of falls off at the end. So they feel like, you know, like they've got big block torque. And then all of a sudden they just kind of don't deliver on the rest of that promise when you run, the, run these things out at RPM. And obviously there are things you can do. Now, I ran a test long ago with about eight or ten different tune port intake manifolds. And the thing is, all of them, you can help this power curve a little bit by putting bigger runners on it and and, and changing the plenum and port matching and, and porting the lower section because we did a lot of work with the guys from Extrude Hone back in the day. And there are a lot of things that you can do to improve the power output of these things, but you re retain the, the same basic shape of the curve because of the runner length. If you don't make the runner length shorter, you're not going to improve the power out of the top of the RPM range. You're not going to change the basic shape of the curve. So even if you put different camshafts in it, you could put a really wild camshaft in it, and all you do is end up losing the low speed power and not picking it up, up top because the intake runner length will never be optimized to make power production at the high RPM of the scale. When I say high RPM, I mean like 6,000 instead of 5,000 or 4,800. So here's our factory tune port deal. Here's what happened after we installed a carburetor. And we're talking about a simple dual plane with a 650 Holley on it. Nothing extravagant. So this is a carbureted motor, a carbureted tune port deal. Simple carburetor. Look at, look at the power that it made out at the top. Equipped with a carburetor, 362 horsepower. So it picked up, you know, a good 30 or so but it also lost down low, which is kind of what we expect. Now, a dual plane is typically fairly good down low, so of any of the carbureted combinations, this would definitely be the way to go. Now, if you want to run the motor out here from 4,500 to 6,000, this is a good combination, but you do sacrifice low speed torque. So that's the, that's the thing. That's, that's inherent in the design. If you have shorter runners or a carbureted dual plane, or God forbid, a, a single plane, which would be a terrible thing on this mild combination, but you, you also tr you always trade off power. So we trade low speed power for high speed power. So on this combination, let me know in the comments, what would you guys like? Where, where would you guys like your power production? Which one of these two would you guys pick? Would you pick the extra power of the carbureted combination? Or would you pick all that wondrous low speed torque of the tune port? Let me know. In test motor number two, which is also a small block 350, we compared a dual plane intake and carburetor to the Holley Stealth Ram EFI intake. So here is the combination. This is a small block 350. It was called the Gladiator by the guys at West Tech because it run so it run endless and endless dyno poles. In this configuration, we had a very mild camshaft in an Extreme Energy 250, which is basically a, an RV cam, you know, kind of a towing cam. So this 350 equipped with the dual plane intake and Demon 650 carburetor and that very mild 250 cam produced 385, 81 horsepower, 381 horsepower and 427 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we upgraded with the Holley Stealth Ram intake. Peak power output jumped to 395 horsepower, but peak torque was down to 417 foot-pounds torque. And again, we see in the, in the induction system comparison, we see a trade-off. The high ram, or not high ram, the, the stealth ram intake, made less power down low out to 4,500, and then more power out the top. So you have to decide what you want. And in this instance, I think it's probably a combination of things. It's, it's a it's a bad mix between the stealth ram, which is basically a tunnel ram style intake with a box on it and the the dual inlet throttle body from a tune port setup. This one had a dual 58 millimeter throttle body, but airflow really wasn't a concern here. This is just a difference between the intake runner length and style of the induction systems. But here's what happened. Let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the carbureted intake. Here's what happened when we upgraded the camshaft. 
We still have the Stealth Ram on here, and here's the combination with that mild Extreme Energy 250 uh, RV style cam. Here's what happened when we put a slightly bigger Extreme Energy 268 cam in it. Peak power output jumped to 436 horsepower. Peak torque was actually very similar, it just shifted out farther. It was 416 foot-pounds of torque. And again, 416 basically for the uh, for the smaller cam. It's just that the smaller cam was um, basically designed to make more power down low. So it had a, a little bit better torque curve, all the way up to 4,700 RPM, and then lost out at the top. So again, we have a trade-off. We have to decide, do we want our power out at the top of the RPM range from, let's say, 4,700 out to 6,500, or do we really want it down low? Do we want it from 2,500 to 4,700? Only you guys can answer that. Where do you guys want your power curve? Do you like the mild cam for your application, maybe for towing and stuff? That's going to work well. Do you want more performance where this thing's going to rev out and make some power at the top? Let me know in the comments. Okay, guys, what did you think about our test? What about the comparison between simple carburation and the factory tune port fuel injection? Now, which one would you pick? Do you like the extra top end power offered by the carbureted induction system? Or do you like all that low end offered by the tune port setup? And really, that's what we're talking about. It's just like picking the camshaft, which, which we did in the second test. Where do you want your power production? That's what it all comes down to. If you're building a low RPM kind of torque motor, then a tune port setup is really good. And for me, and I'm sure you guys feel the same way, all the tune port fans out there, I wish they would have used that induction system on trucks. It would have been awesome. It is it was ideally suited to make a ton of torque. So if you could have combined a small block 350 or a 383 or a small block 400 with tune port, you would have had a super torquey machine, especially with the right kind of camshaft. Now, if they would have combined that then, later on with the Vortec head, I think you would have had a real winner, a super torquey combination for truck applications. But what about the carbureted stuff? Or what about the that stealth ram that we tested? If you want you know, power up and higher RPM, pick something like that 268 cam. You're gonna cam the combination to run at the desired RPM. You want more top end? Pick a cam like that. Also, your induction system. You want more RPM? Pick the induction system that suits where you wanna make power. I'm Richard Holdner, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll keep testing.